pleasant day, everyone. By the way, it is, yes, Professor Devita Castillo Mapata, and we are going to have our ASIC Kurnus lecture in Chapter 1 with Chem 16, that is Principles of Chemistry. Chapter 1 is about atoms and periodic table. So we have this different objective for chapter one. The first one is, of course, you are going to know the structure of an atom that is its subatomic particles. We will also know how to write the chemical symbol, especially for elements, which is found, of course, in the periodic table. The third one is we are going to determine the Number of atom, the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in the subatomic particles. We will also try to calculate atomic masses of an element. Then we will identify the different parts of the periodic table wherein we will identify where is the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids. We will also use the periodic table in the computation of the molar masses. And of course, we are going to convert mass to mole, mole to particles. Okay, so this is in chapter one. Of course, the first thing that we should know is we should, then we should, define what is chemistry. Chemistry actually is a branch of science that deals about matter. If you talk about matter, it's composition of matter. Composition has something to do with the content of the matter. We will also delve into the changes that matter undergo, or it means how it is being transformed, what happened if there is a chemical reaction and what will be its product? And that is known as transformation of matter or the changes that matter undergoes. Another thing also is, is its reaction, reaction mechanism in the matter. Okay. Matter had been defined long ago, especially during your in your high, okay, that matter is anything, anything that you can see in the surrounding is matter. Anything that has space that will occupy space and has mass is matter. And there are five traditional branches of chemistry, namely in organic chemistry, organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, physical chemistry, and biochemistry. This is the basic branch of chemistry. Let us describe each of it. In organic chemistry, this is a branch of chemistry where in it deals about chemical reactions of all of those elements in the periodic table except carbon. Okay. So what will happen if an element combines with another element? Of course, there will be a chemical reaction that is in inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry will deal with about inorganic compounds. If you talk about inorganic compounds that these are compounds which you can see in the periodic table, in most cases, it will be a metal added with a non-metal that is a form of a compound, sometimes also a non-metal and another metal, okay? So that is in organic chemistry. Well, organic chemistry is known as the chemistry of carbon-containing compounds. So carbon-containing compounds, what makes it carbon-containing compounds? Because organic compounds comprises mostly of this, element chance, but mostly it will be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sometimes nitrogen, sulfur, and other traces. That is organic chemistry. 
Analytical chemistry has something to do with the composition of matter. So in this part in analytical chemistry, this will delve mostly on the qualitative. Qualitative, if you talk about qualitative, is this will answer the question, what kind? That's qualitative. So in the analytical chemistry, you can identify the substance. What is that substance through varied experiments, through varied measurement using equipment that is in analytical chemistry. And at the same time, this could also give this question, how much or quantitative? So analytical chemistry will answer the how much, which is quantitative, what kind, which is qualitative. That is in analytical chemistry. For physical chemistry, this is mostly computation. Why? Because this will talk about reaction mechanism, the rate, the energy transfer, and what happened when matter undergo changes. Okay, so how fast will be the reaction? How slow will be the reaction? That is in physical chemistry. One of the most difficult branches in chemistry is physical chemistry because this has something to do with computation. And the last major branch of chemistry is biochemistry, which is the most interesting chemistry, not branch of chemistry, because this will tell you about the chemistry of life. This will give you some ideas about the processes that takes place in an organism. That is why it's called chemistry in life. DNA, DNA, the genes, okay? The genes is being explained by means of that branch on chemistry, that's biochemistry. So that these are the basic branches of chemistry. Why is it that Chemistry is very important. Why do we need to study chemistry? Chemistry is interrelated and it has something to do with our environment. Okay. In what way? In what way? Okay. Actually, if you talk about Sabang Iro, but if you talk about chemistry, everything that happens in, an envir in our environment will always, it will always answer by chemistry. At the same time, this will also connected with chemistry. For instance, the production of energy. Nowadays, we need to limit, especially there is a rising consumption of electricity. I can still remember last month, my electric bill is just 2,000. But Suddenly it rise up to 4,000 karun na month. Why? I don't know why. Okay, that is why I'm, I'm asking, but it had been, it had been, no? there is already a claimer for everybody that this is happening almost to everyone of the sudden increase of electricity. But we could minimize this consumption of electricity by means of solar panel. Okay, but the problem is, of course, this, the first, the first thing that is needed is you should come up with a solar panel and coming up with a solar installation of solar panel is a little bit expensive. Okay, no? Pero later on, dugay ang iyang kuan, dugay ang iyang gamit. And it will be no need to pay for electric bill. Why? Because this is a way of trapping the sun's energy. That is why it's so, so called solar panel. And what is the connection of this in chemistry? The panel that is being used, the solar panel that is being used, are made of silicon. Okay. What are silicon? Okay. We will find it out. Silicon is one of the elements in the in the predictable no then 
this could also answer why is it that fireflies emit beautiful uh, light during night? Yeah, because there is a chemical reaction in the insect. Okay, insects apart, Nia. This is this has something to do also with bioluminescence. There is also no, an explanation why chemistry is very important, especially in the recent trends nowadays, the technology. No? One of these is the lead, lead that is light emitting diodes. Unlike before, most of the bulb that we have is not so bright. I'm using the bulb now, no? though in my room it's a little bit dark, but it's already bright because of that lead bulb. Hey, everything that improves our life, no? especially in uh, the food, okay? food, even in agriculture, that has something to do with technology. And that is very useful using chemistry. Even medicine nowadays, okay, this IV, used for IV, that is intravenous, okay, sultipanila in uh, Visayan term is uh, dextrose, no? So this one, this plastic is made of highly resistant to chemical attack. So that is in the field of medicine. That is why we, chemistry is very important in the different aspect of our lives. As you can see here, chemistry is the central science. Masuko ang ubang branches of chemistry. Ani, nga nung chemistry na may central science? Because chemistry is intertwined with different branches in sciences. For instance, in environmental science, like, hey, in Visay, we have courses here about environmental science. I can still remember before, that was three years ago, where in I was included in the project of CSU that is contamination pathway in Karaga. No, Karaga, whole Karaga. Okay, so because Karaga is known as the mining capital of the Philippines. Wow, yes. But of course, there is a problem because in mining, we, they use, not we, they use mercury, which is considered as heavy metals in entrapping gold. Okay. So of course, after that panning, wash out anila, that will be washed out to the body of water. And during leaching, what is leaching? Pag ulan, padung yun na siya sa river. Okay, so tendency is there will be an increase in heavy metals. If you talk about gold panning, it's only mercury. It's not only mercury which will have a possibility of being leached out. What will happen? There will be cadmium, no? cadmium, lead, so on and so forth. Cadmium, lead. Uh, silver like that, nickel like that, but the most hard look is the mercury. So what happened is during that project, we had, we had, we had uh, traces of this, no? We sampled every body of water from Surigao del Sur, Agusan del Norte, Agusan del Sur, and it is very alarming because our, our body of water has already a high concentration of mercury, lead, and cadmium. Okay. So if this will be eaten by fishes, by aquatic animals, of course, kisa may mukha unpod sa aquatic animal, kita pod. So tendency, it is the human being that will have a problem on it. Okay, that is environmental science. In geology and earth science, how is chemistry being applied? They will know the presence of, of uh, gold, okay, by using analysis, no? For instance, kabot sila, pag kabot nila sa yuta, mm, kabot nila, they will analyze that certain, for instance, 
in a one sack of no? one sack of that soil that will be brought to the laboratory and the laboratory will have a sample of that okay and they will know unsa kadaghana and content sa gold or whatever metals you want it to be analyzed okay that is why chemistry is very relevant to different branches in chemistry in sciences mathematics also even physics physics is always intertwined with chemistry especially if you talk about energy yes naguna is a connection with physics in engineering also the newest uh, the newest one of the newest branch in chemistry is that nanoscience okay nanotechnology this has something to do with materials up to the level very very small times 10 to the power of negative nine so gamay kaisha and what happened if it is in a nano that is nanotechnology uh there are so many there are so many benefits in nanotechnology especially in production of materials okay then this is interconnected with biochemistry especially molecular bio and medicine uh, biology biomedicine the traditional medicine we have two types of medicine that we have no, that is the traditional medicine. The traditional medicine could be the source of the plant source, okay? And at the same time, the synthetic one, okay? So if you talk about traditional, meaning for instance, the tawatawa, like that, uh, that could, according to them, the tawatawa could cure dengue, okay? So that could be analyzed in the laboratory and they will know what are the bioactive component, which, is present in tawatawa is it it does it have alkaloids tannins like that saponins okay alkaloids in most cases are the medicinal component the saponins anashia. so that is it has something to do with the biomedicine in in agriculture okay we have new modern no new modern new good modern bio modern technology in the uh maize maize production corn production we have the uh gmo the genetic modified organism okay the gmo what happened is they had uh, incorporated some important genes in coming up with a corn uh, that kind of a corn, once you plant it, it is no longer susceptible to pests and insecticide. So what happened is, mas tambok siya, tapos dili siya dali duulon o mga insekto. Dili yun siya duulon. Kaya naman, it is genetically modified. Unlike with the original corn, nga, bukbukon pa, kuanan pag mga insect. Okay, and pests. That is the GMO. Okay, that is in agriculture. At the same time nowadays, your plant will not grow without fertilizer. And that will be attacked again with, no, mga weeds. Okay, the weed, the fungus. Okay, that is why it needs a pesticide. In the food science also, in what way? This has something to do with the enhancement of the food. Okay, so that is why if you have a corned beef, kung mahal kain ng corned beef na pure na beef. So what they add on is an extender. Okay, so na ilad ka, oh, dili na siya, di na siya pure beef. Okay, ngano man, it is added with extender. Okay, no, even. A uh, beef loaf, okay. Nagagana siya extender. That is in the food science. In toxicology also, in terms of food poisoning, they will know no, the spoilage, the uh, spoilage of the food. In what way? For instance, this most of the food that is having with a sauce, tomato sauce, it has a tendency of easy 
early spoilage because of the presence of that microorganism that is Salmonella, that the E. coli like that, which could cause food, food poisoning. That is why it's so very important. Even the dosage in medicine, dili pataka o inum. That is why most of the antibiotics nowadays are regulated. Unlike before, you can just buy it over the counter, but now no more, nanuman, because of the toxicity level. So there is that dosage, certain dosage. The over the counter medicine are only those for the antipyretic, meaning for the fever, like that, uh, for the pain, ibuprofen, like that. No more for the antibiotic, okay, because this will lead to resistant antibiotic if it has if it is not handled properly so let's move on actually atoms are known to be the basic unit of matter okay these are the defining structure of an element if you talk about an atom only this this is the smallest no? particle of a matter during the Greek time, the olden time, according to Aristotle, that there is that small particle and it is named as atomos. No? This is a small particle, but it is indivisible, according to him. Okay, meaning it could not be divided, it could not be cut, uncut. No? But as the years go by, what happened is we come up with this idea. It is already during the modern chemistry, no? it comes up that atoms is not indivisible. There are its subatomic particles. Okay, here are its subatomic particles. So this is inside the nucleus, inside in an atom, there are three particles. Inside the atom, no? there is that nucleus. Nucleus, inside the nucleus, there are two particles that is the positive, that's proton, and the uncharged, which is the neutron. Outside this nucleus, the electron orbits outside. This has having a negative charge. Therefore, there are three particles that is subatomic particles, then neutrons, electrons, and protons. So if this is now your nucleus, no? outside the nucleus, electrons are spinning here. No? And you cannot identify where it is. That is why there is that electron cloud. Okay. So into the periodic table, as you can see in the periodic table, it is being grouped into two. No? The period that is the horizontal line. There are seven periods in the periodic table. That portion there, that's group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group seven. That is period. Baspana is period na siya. Then there is that, that is vertical, huh? The horizontal thing, oh, the vertical thing is group one, group two, group three no? and it has a and b group one a group two a no, there is group two b like that no? why it is having that groupings in that way because it has its similarities in its properties then we will have this we will discuss it more okay so in group one a what happened if you look into that Elements are being the success, succeedingly, the succeedingly increasing in its atomic number. It will start with hydrogen, which wherein its atomic number is one, followed by helium two, so on and so forth. It is increasing, the until paubos. Okay, so for instance, carbon, carbon is in six. Okay. So carbon has an atomic number of six. 
what is the connotation of this atomic number? Actually, atomic number is equal to the number of protons and number of electrons. Okay. And the mass number is known as molar mass. Pwede po na siya. Molar mass or atomic mass. No? Mass number is defined as the number of neutrons plus the number of protons. Okay. I repeat. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons and the number of electrons. So how are we going to, if carbon is six, meaning how many protons, six, how many electrons, six, then how are we going to know the number of electrons in carbon atom? Of course, we have this formula that the mass number is equal to the number of neutrons plus number of protons. In order to solve for the number of neutrons, all you have to do is transpose this number of protons or the atomic number. Therefore, the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number or molar mass, okay, minus the number of protons. What is the mass number? 12. What is the atomic number? 6. 12 minus 6. Therefore, in carbon, there are 6 neutrons, okay? That's it. So these are now the subatomic particles. Let us look into its symbol. For protons, it has P positive because it has a positive charge. And this one, this is the atomic mass unit. The neutron N, it has a charge of zero because it's uncharged. Electron E negative because it has a negative charge. and the charge is negative one. Okay. Oh, so this is your assignment. For instance, we have carbon. One that I had, no, I had given as an example. If this is carbon here, okay, carbon. What is the symbol of carbon C? What is the atomic number of carbon six? What is the atomic mass of carbon twelve? Okay. So how many protons? As I've said, the number, the atomic number is equal to the protons and the electrons, meaning number of protons is six, number of electrons six. How are you going to compute for the number of neutrons? That is the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. So 12 minus six is six. So your carbon, has symbol of C, atomic number of six, atomic mass of 12, protons, six, neutrons, six, and electrons, six. This will be add on to your assignment. I will in place this in R. Ito na ako niya ibutang sa Google Classroom for quiz one. Okay. So what are isotopes? Oh, isotopes. These are comp elements, no? In this way, these elements has the same atomic number, meaning number of protons, but they will differ in the number of neutrons. In what way? Because their atomic mass will differ. So possible they na siya, Yes, there are elements which has uh, different, no? Radioactive, radioactive element which has different isotopes. Okay, for instance, uh, here, this is hydrogen. Hydrogen has three forms. That is the protium, deuterium, tritium. Okay, uh, so in the protium, your atomic number is one, your atomic mass is one. So what will be the number of neutrons. One minus one is, is equal to zero. Therefore, in your protium, it has one proton and zero neutrons. In deuterium, deuterium is having, baliha, this is atomic, that two there is atomic mass, that one there is atomic number. In deuterium, you have one proton, pariubit sila. Okay, same man ang number of protons, okay. But 
in the nucleus, in the neutron zone, it has two atomic mass of two minus atomic number one, that is one. Therefore, in deuterium, it has one proton and one neutron. And the last one is the tritium. Huh? It has atomic mass of three protons, one, three minus one is two. Therefore, in your tritium, that is one proton and two neutrons. And that is isotopes. Did you get it? Isotopes, they have the same number of protons, but they will differ in the mass number. That is why its neutrons will differ. Okay. Another is carbon. Carbon has three forms. It has three isotopes. That is carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Okay. We already know that carbon has an atomic number of six, right? Okay, so if it is 12, your atomic mass is 12, therefore the first one is 12 minus six, therefore this carbon 12 has six protons and six neutrons. Carbon 13 will have 13 minus six is seven, meaning six protons and seven neutrons. And carbon 14 will have 14 minus 6 is 8. Therefore, your carbon 14 will have 6 protons and 8 neutrons. What happens if your atom has a charge? In what way? Okay, atoms will be converted into ions if and when it lost or gained an electron. Okay, now it will lose and gain electron. This will only happen if and when no? it will form into compound if and when there is that no? different charges of the element. It should be positive and negative if it will form into a compound. Really pretty positive, positive inertia. It should be like that in the formation of the compound. So what happened? when your atoms lost or gain an electron. This will be transformed into ion. So no, when an atom loses its electron, it will have a positive charge, and that is a cation. Cation gani, there is a loss of an electron. But if an atom gains an electron, it will have a negative charge and it is known as an ion. Okay, so when will this happen? No? So atoms, no? when an electron is being released, okay. So for instance, sodium, sodium has 11 electrons, okay. So your Z here, your number of protons is 11, okay, for sodium. Can you still remember the octet rule? Okay. No? So in, in the so-called no, energy level, but on first energy level, can you still remember your quantum quantum uh, theory? Okay, sige lang, by next, ano po na siya, next topic. No? We will just have a small portion of this here. No? So for sodium, it has 11 electrons. So what happened? No? So your sodium, of course, we already know that the first energy level will have only n is equal to one. It will only have it will have a maximum number of electrons two. Then this will be followed by eight because it follows the octet rule. No? Octet rule meaning if the outermost shell of your no? outermost shell will be equal to eight, meaning it is stable. And most of the elements, you now when combines with another element, this will always wants to be stable. Mabitaw ng mga tao, no? Mm. Single, mag-double. Ah, dili, dili. Single, wala, single, o oh, single, wala, mag, wala, mag, wala, problema. Nga, no, mangita, mag, problema. mag, ninyo, good. Okay. To make you stable, eh? that's it. 
No, kung di ay kumaminyo na dai stable na dai. Kung dalaga pa dili pa stable. No. So, dili pa ka ayon. So, okay, no. So, what happened here? So, balik ta, ginu ang rato. So, what happened here is, no, you have eight electrons. In the outermost shell, meaning pinaka last nga shell, no, there is still one. Kinahanglan, may stable na siya if the outermost shell will have eight electrons. That is octet rule. Since there is in the outermost shell na ay nagsobra nga usa here. So this needs to be released. Kinahanglan, ipang i-transfer na siya by means of no, ionic bonding no, or imo na siyang i-share by means of covalent bonding. Ang ato na po ng next section po na siya. So what happened if this will be released? If this will be lost? If it will be I give off? What will happen? So this will be eight na. Oh, this is already stable because eight octet rule. But what happened? It lost one electron. Did you get it? Okay. Therefore, here this is unstable na. Your proton is 11. Your electron is 11. Charge here is 0. Kaya nga naman, pariyo mas siya. Positive 11, negative 11. So, 0. Pero nga nga, kung imo na siyang i-release, your proton is 11, your electron is 10. So, na ay charge nga positive 1. Did you get it? Yes, that's it. Let's move on to atomic mass. What is atomic mass? As I've said in the periodic table, makit ang tunin yun, no? Sa ubos, Ana, ang upper portion is the atomic number. Ang ubos is the atomic mass. Atomic mass sometimes is atomic weight, no? Molecular weight, no? Molar mass, no? Ana na siya, no? So, these masses of atoms and subatomic particles are very small. A conversion unit must be used to measure them. So, the... AMU, atomic mass unit, or U, defined as one half of the mass of one carbon atom. So what's the mass of the carbon atom? That is 1.661 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So how are we going to compute the atomic weight? That is the average atomic mass is equal to the atomic weight. Do not worry because I have a next video. video in solving for the atomic mass or the molar mass. discuss. So how are we going to get the average atomic mass if and when no, it has an element having two or more isotopes? For instance, carbon-12 and carbon-13. Unsa ka pila kay atomic weight ana? Okay, so we will get the average of this with this three two isotopes. So carbon twelve, it was found out that this is ninety nine percent abundance. Meaning, mao ng carbon twelve ang hinda o no kanya naman mas daghan yun siya in nat in the environment in nature, na. Carbon-13, it's only 1%. So how are we going to get the average atomic mass of this carbon isotope? So you get the atomic mass, no? atomic mass, which is 12. No? Then look into the percentage abundance. Percentage abundance is 99. Divide it by 100, therefore it's 0.99. Multiply that one, that is 11.88. For carbon-13, Okay, the atomic mass is 13. And what is the percentage abundance? It's 1 divided by 100.01. Add it up. Therefore, the atomic weight is 12.01. That is now the average atomic weight of carbon having two isotopes. Mm, this will be your assignment. Okay, no? so looking into the periodic table, no? as I have said, no? This is being, na, this is period horizontal ni siya. Kani, ang period pa na, ha? that's period. Period 1, period 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's period. It's horizontal. Na. The group are vertical rows. Na. Ganong gi, usa siya grupo, meaning 
they have similar properties. All this group one has a charge of positive one. All this group two has a charge of positive two. And group 7A has a charge of negative one. The rest, dependent. This is a noble gas, which has no, stable. It's stable because the outermost shell here is eight electrons, except for helium. Helium has two, I think. energy level one. Okay. So that is periodic table. And you should know what are group 1A, that they are the alkaline metals. Group 2A, they are the alkaline earth metals. Group 6A, they are calcogens. 7A, halogens. And 8A, they are known as the rare or noble gas or inert gases. Inert, okay. Dili na na siya mo. Dili na na siya mo react because it has a stable configuration, okay? So that's it. That is the periodic table of elements. Here, as you can see here, we can have the identification of the different types of elements. That is mostly metal here. So this gray one, and in gray, this gray are metals. Then the pink one here are non-metals. Kaningurag ladder nga hiya. This one here, ladder nga, that give a discretion, a line between metals and non-metals are known as metalloids. Metalloids exhibit the characteristic of a metal and at the same time a non-metal. So, what are the different characteristics? How can we, how can we differentiate the characteristic of metals from non-metals? Of course, metals, they are shiny, shiny in a way that it has, it has luster. Okay. Metal be shiny, labon ang gold. Okay, no? Non-metal, it is not shiny. Okay. They are good conductor of heat. That is why if you have a ladle, ladle ka ng pang, uh, uh, sa pagluto, okay, what's bisaya anak, no? Imo ka ina siyang ibilin, no? Mabilin ka ina mo, paghawin ni mo otro perti ng, di, makapaso na siya. Because if it is made of metal, it conducts heat. At the same time, electricity. That is why most are, no? Connection with our electricity are metals, pero it is being covered by a non-metal because non-metal are insulators. One mga rubber, no? Ang ladle ni mo, ang social nga ladle is the handle is having a rubber. No? Aron dili siya init because they are poor conductor of heat and electricity. Metals are malleable, meaning they could easily be molded. No? Molded. That is why you have different molder, molder uh, for puto molder for kanang uh, mga gutom na noong ko for molder making leche plan, leche plan, di ba? Oh, they could be molded. Na these are metals. Ang non metals, they are not malleable. Okay, they are ductile also. They can bend. Without breaking, okay. Di din sila mga tuguang kaya makabend pa. No, no, no. Actually, they are ductile in a way that sin ka ng sin. O ka ni mga aluminum, pwede ni mo siya i-roll. Yeah. But for non-metal, it's not. They are brittle. Pag, ah, go on. Then all of metals are solid at room temperature except, of course, mercury. Na? Wak takabalos ng metals. Okay. It could be liquid, solid, gas in the non-metal. Oh, okay. So, kayut lang kay nakula tuplo. Okay. So next is the mold. The mold is not the mold that you can see as a birthmark. Mold actually is no. Mold is the unit of measurement in chemistry. In what way? No. You can convert 
grams to mole, mole to particles using this concept. No? Always remember in one mole of a substance, but I had discussed it thoroughly in our the, the other video, wherein there is a solution no? in a sample problem. A mole actually is a big quantity. If you talk about it's almost the same that in one dozen of in one dozen, it has 12 pieces or 12 of everything. No, ana siya, ana ang mole. No, so meaning in in one dozen, that is equivalent to 12 sleepers, no, 12 glasses, 12 eggs, like that. Okay, that is the meaning of mole. Meaning in one mole, that is equivalent to if you look into molar mass of hydrogen, it's one. Meaning in one mole of hydrogen, how many grams? It's one gram of hydrogen. For oxygen, oxygen in the periodic table is 16, okay. Meaning in one mole of oxygen, that is equivalent to 16 grams of oxygen. And how are you going to convert that mole into atoms and molecules? Okay, in one mole of a substance that is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms or molecules. Yeah? That is in mole to a particle. A particle could either be an atoms or a molecule. So that is the power of Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's, for instance, in 12 grams of pure carbon, nah, okay, that is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms of carbon. And one mole of anything nah, contains 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. That is Avogadro's number. So here it is, and one mole of hydrogen, how many atoms of hydrogen? 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms of hydrogen. And one mole of water, you are not going to use atoms, okay? More than, pila naman siya ka atoms, no? So that is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23, but it is not atoms, but molecules of water. And same thing in one mole of carbon dioxide that is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules of carbon dioxide. That is the conversion of mole. Okay, so we will have this. No? You are going to solve this in sample problem three. Okay, but don't worry because I am going to discuss it in. No? I'm going to give some exercises in the added video about conversion of grams, moles, and atoms and molecules, okay? So how about the molar mass, okay? Molar mass of any atom or molecule compound is the mass of one mole of that substance. So how are you going to get the molar mass? Look, uh, look into the molar mass in the periodic table of that, no? element for instance argon ar its atomic mass looking into the periodic table it is 39.95 atomic mass unit but in most cases we use this smaller mass can they? that is 39.95 grams per mole that is the unit of molar mass for this c286 now how are you going to get the average molar mass all you have to do is multiply it with the number of atoms in each of the element. Na? So hydrogen, a uh, carbon, what's the molar mass of carbon? 12, how many atoms? Two, 12 times two is 24. Then for hydrogen, how many atoms? Six, what is the molar mass of atomic mass of hydrogen? One, so. 1 times 6, 6, 6 plus 24, it's 30 something. That is 30.97 grams of this one. Here, 
Sojum has 23, chlorine is, ima yun na na siya, 23, like that, basta. Ang iyang molar mass is 49.99 grams per mole. Oh, I forgot to tell you that everybody should have a commercial periodic table so that you will have no difficulty in in looking into the atomic number and the atomic mass. Okay, so that is for the molar mass. So in the periodic table, as I said, this ladder here that separates a metal from a non-metal. Metal resides on the left side of your periodic table. Non-metal resides on the right side of your periodic table. The demarcation between the metal and the non-metal are the metalloids. Pergamera siya, kaning violet in color, this one. The boron silicon, this one. Until polonium. Okay, they are metalloids. Okay, so that ends our lesson in chapter one. I will update also, I will also include an example for the conversion of the grams into mole, into also what call this, into particles, atoms, and molecules. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Keep safe, everyone.